everyone and welcome to A Little Bit of Genius. In this series of video podcast episodes, Lord Anglia teachers from around the world are answering parents' burning questions so that you can learn more about our schools. So in today's episode, we're here in Hong Kong. My name is Neymar Charlier and I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning for our school here at NACE HK. So I've been teaching for about 23 years now. I've worked in the UK, the USA, in Romania, um, and I've held positions from head teacher to deputy principal, but I'm always and always have been obsessively interested in how children learn, how learning happens, and how we can make the curriculum as exciting as possible for our learners. So it's a really good time to talk about what's happened with our virtual school. So I'm going to pass you over to one of my colleagues, Emma Coleman, to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Emma Coleman. I'm head of Psycho Campus here at North Anglia International School, Hong Kong. I'm also the Early Years Foundation Stage Teaching Fellow for North Anglia University. So I support colleagues across the globe with everything to do with the Early Years Foundation Stage. And I'll pass on Thank to my you, Hi, I'm Ed Fielding, and I'm the head of primary here at North Anglia International School, Hong Kong. Um, I've been here now for six years. Uh, and it's been an incredible development of our primary school. Um, and I was le I led and managed the, the primary section of our virtual offering called our virtual school experience. So an incredible time to be to be part of our school um, and looking forward to talking about our virtual offering in this podcast. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Emma and Ed. We can't wait to get excited to get started. The burning question that we thought you might have on your minds is about the virtual school experience that we've all been through, this pandemic that's happened. And our first question is around a question that lots of parents worry about, which is what's going to happen if the pandemic forces the schools to close again and we all have to go virtual? What's the impact going to be on my child's learning? Um, so I thought maybe, Emma, you could start us off with your thoughts on this very, very troublesome question that lots of parents have. Absolutely. And there will be times that we will need to move back into a virtual school experience. That might be because of a typhoon here in Hong Kong, or it might be because of the pandemic again. But I think that now we know that we have a really high quality a learning experience for the children that can be offered online. And we're lucky at the moment in Hong Kong because we have our children back in school with us. And we've seen that despite the virtual school experience, the children are now back in school, making exceptional progress in all areas of learning. So that says to us that we did something really, really right on the virtual school experience. And actually, just yesterday, we were texting on our leadership team a WhatsApp group because we thought there might be a red rain warning today, which close our school again but we were ready we were ready with our virtual school experience we knew exactly what we had to do exactly what the parents would need exactly what the students would need and so i think if we are forced back into a virtual school experience again we know exactly what we have and we have a really bespoke uh, way of teaching and learning in an online school so from my perspective i would say it will be absolutely fine we're prepared we're ready with something amazing that the children can access about you, Ed, what do you think will happen if we have to go virtual again? Do you think it would work? Yeah, well, I can understand this question from, from parents, and I know what their great worry is. Has this dramatically uh, impacted on a negative basis their, their education? Um, and I think if you've had a strong virtual offering, then the answer is no. I think there, there, is, a diff there is a balance, a slightly different balance of experiences. And so I think there's been some real pros um, that have come out of this, that children have been much, much more independent um, in their own, they've had a lot more agency in their own learning. Um, we very carefully track their progress. So we've kept a really, we've got a very strong tracking process here uh, in primary. So we know how they're doing in the, in the curriculum. Um, but there have been some wider experiences that have been harder to generate on the virtual school experience, but we know that. And what we've done is we balance that very, very, very clearly, as soon as they get back into school, we make sure that that's a real focus when we when we get back in. So I think a strong school knows the balance of what their children, you know, they really, really know their children, they really, really track what their children's progress has been in all areas, um, in the curriculum objectives, but also the wider experiences that they have. And over time, we know we balance that. Um, we're coming to the end of the year, and so we're we're obviously got that time for handovers from from year year group to year group, um, and that's also forming part of our our handover process. That we're we're making sure that those experiences 
that we need to continue giving our students um, into next year are well in place. So I think we've always done this. Schools have always been very good at balancing the needs of the groups of children that they have and making sure that over time they give them that experience. I think this is a, a time that's no different to that. Um, but I do think it's important to keep in mind that there's actually been some some real benefits that have come out of the the, the kind of the pandemic and that actually children have really developed in, in so many ways. Their use of technology and their, their agency of their own learning is, is certainly two of those two of those aspects. Yeah, that's a really good point, Ed. And I think because all of us here on this call are also parents. So we've got different age of children, but I know for, for myself as a parent, um, my oldest is is in year six, so I'm sort of 10, 11 years old. One of the worries was, is he going to be able to learn and is he going to be able to keep making progress as I'm at work, he's at home, he's joining in on these virtual lessons. How is the teacher going to know whether or not he's learning and how is the teacher going to support him to learn if I can't be there? And I think that's, that's one of the things that parents worry about. And I know, Ed, you and I, we, we looked at this in detail as to how we're going to make sure that the virtual school supports learning and we're going to use our technology and carefully craft our timetable so it works for the ages of the children so that they can be online and have a lesson at the same time as their teacher there, that we, we've got ways, mechanisms for children and teachers to talk to each other without another adult needing to be there for the, for the older children. And that worked really well as well, that the teachers could then pick up on, on what they were understanding and, and plug gaps where it was needed and, and maybe gather children together in small groups where it was needed. And that, that really helped with, um, with how we created a school that wasn't in a physical building. So we had to kind of think of it very differently. And I think, Emma, you in the early years, you, you were really creative in how you managed to get children with teachers. Um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit to the parents about what worked really well with that. Yeah, absolutely. It was making sure that each individual child was on their own unique journey, just as they are in school, and making sure that we were reaching out to the parents linked to that unique journey to make sure that they were having all the support and the challenge that they needed. Um, and my little girl as well, like like your children, Naima, uh, she was, she's just done her reception year. And I was really worried as a mummy as well about how on earth do you teach a child to read and write and learn their numbers? How do you teach them to have self-confidence online? And it, it really has worked for her and all of the other children in reception. And they've come back to school now because they've been on that unique journey, even in a virtual school. And they've come back to real school now and they're just continuing that journey and continuing that progress. And it really has been amazing to see. And I think it's that personalized learning that, that really needs to be at the heart of a virtual school just as it is in any school as well. Yeah. Neva, how did you, um, you you're teaching uh, children right at the other end of the school in, in, yeah. in IGCSE, how did how did you see things um, with the with the older children? I was so interesting so I teach 15 year olds so I teach a GCSE subject called Global Perspectives and I've got a couple of classes and all of the students were so different the older ones are a little bit more reluctant to put their cameras on when you're teaching online like we are here. But you can you can get there. There's some little techniques and tricks that teachers will know that will get them to, to engage. But engagement is what we were after. So we wanted to make sure that they were they were learning in the right way. So I used to ask my students all the time, send them little forms or quizzes to check, how is this working for you? Do you understand what I'm what I'm teaching you? Do you understand? where it is that you need to go and and do is this format working for you do we need to do it differently and when there's lots of um conversation that needs to happen as part of the course they have to collaborate so i had them in breakout rooms quite often so checking that that was actually working by having them record those breakout rooms or having them work collaboratively in their own ways but then letting me peek into what they were doing and there's there's a little systems we could put in place so that I could check meant that they they did manage to get through the course they did make progress they were able to collaborate it's it's not the same as being face to face the same for adults but it is possible to talk on a teams call and to to learn on a on a teams call and to to then stop that call and and go offline and do some collaborative work together maybe on a shared document or with a video and then bring that content back to your teacher and get feedback from me and then make it better or make feedback from your peers and then make it better. So 
they did manage to make progress. They have got through the course and, and now they're physically um, back with me. It's, it's, it's really lovely to see that they were able to do that. And we were able to get relationships built because that's always tricky when you start your, your year with your new class, you want to get to know them and them to know you and, and, and all the little groups that's, that form within a class that are really important, the social skills that we need to develop alongside um, the other skills that we're developing. But social skills are really important and there, it was possible to do that and it was possible to support it. So I think back to that, that question of if we have to go BSE, we're super experienced now. We've we've done it. When we did it the first time, it was it was us trying to to work out every time. Does this work? Does this work? Does this work? But now we kind of know what works, and it's always different with every new group of children that you have. But like Emma said for the typhoon yesterday, we we were ready to go with lessons. We could have taught from home, and the children could have still taken part. So, so yeah, I would say that that was a, a good one. But I think another question that parents often have is how should they support their child at home with virtual learning? So I'm just wondering, maybe, um, Ed, do you want to, to start off with this one? What, what can parents do at home that's really supportive? I think there's a, there's a couple of big things about this. So part of it is about the kind of physical space and experience at home. And then part of it is about helping them um, be and, and engage in, in their curriculum. Um, I think one of the things that we learned um, quite early on is the importance of um, routines. Children, it's really important for children to have routines. Um, and so we set up a timetable for our children. They started their school day at a certain time. Um, and we, one of the things that parents really could support with this is make sure that they get up early, um, that they get dressed, that they have a good breakfast, um, just as you would on any normal school day, and they're, they're ready to start their school day. Um, and it is a school day. Um, I should even take the inverted commas out. It's not inverted commas. It is a full school day. Um, and that then they kind of step into a new space. Um, and so that then there's a, there's a space in the house that's comfortable. Um, they've got a good chair. They've got a table. Um, they've got a device that works. Um, you've got internet connection. Um, our, our families found that uh, laptops were actually um, were easier to navigate. Um, the functionalities of a laptop, um, certainly for primary students, were a bit bit easier to navigate than than tablets. There were a few more functionalities on some of the programs, um, but but tablets were were just were almost as good. They were still very 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 good to access it, and everything was was accessible from them. Uh, and all of our tech that we chose, we deliberately made sure it was accessible on 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 all devices. Um, but that they really step into that school day. They're sitting in a in a comfortable chair. They've got headphones that are comfortable because they'll be wearing them throughout the day. That it's got a microphone on it, um, and and that they're then all set up then to fully access it. Um, I think there are uh, the, the kind of important aspects. We don't want students to be online um, on a computer all day long. And we, we were really, we were really, really conscious about this. Uh, uh, and and Neymar, that was part of our, a lot of our conversations as well. It was about how do we, how do we break children, make sure that they get, they, they step away from the computer and that they don't, they're not they're not plugged in all the time. So again, we built that into our timetable, and so parents at home facilitate that those breaks. Make sure they get outside, uh, go and get some fresh air. That they move, um, and they have a good lunch, obviously. Um, and then the, the the kind of the other thing is about the the kind of support at home. And I know lots of lots of parents really worried that they need to be right next to their child. Um, throughout the whole day. And there was no way that they were possibly going to um, be able to access the curriculum without an adult sitting right next to them. And I think what was incredible was how independent our students got. And part of that was the design that we, we deliberately designed it so that it was meant to be independent. They were, we were, we were, our teachers were leading the learning and they were, they were setting things up. The channels of communication between the teacher and the student were there. It was deliberately set up to make sure that Parents didn't need to sit next to them because uh, all of our parents needed to still work. Um, and I think it was incredible to see how independent and increasingly independent our pupils got over time. Um, and I think supporting them with that independence, um, talking to them about how they're going to structure their day, talking to them, you know, checking in on saying, do you know where you need to go? But then allowing them that space to then do their work, um, to, then, to then be independent. So from a, a primary point of view, that was 
that's very much the kind of things that we talk to our parents about supporting. Um, what did you, Emma? Obviously, the younger ones are are it's even even more difficult to 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 develop that independence. So how, how did how did you um, do that with your with your parents? Yeah, definitely. And the and the younger children do need that little bit more support, especially at first, just to get used to how to mute and unmute their microphone and how to interact via via a screen. But they did brilliantly and, and gradually got more and more independence as we went through the virtual school. I think for the earlier years, uh, the parent partnership really is key. And it's about the parents talking to their child's class teacher about their child, if they've maybe had a tricky day, if maybe they didn't sleep that well that night night, if maybe something's going on in, at home that's affecting them, or if they're actually absolutely fine. And, and that's and that's great, isn't it? That's another conversation to have. So just that partnership, just those conversations and those discussions between the class teacher um, and the parent is really key to making sure that the children do thrive within a virtual school. We also um, offered lots of our parents access to training. So on aspects that they might not have had to do ordinarily at home, uh, things like messy play, things like role play, things like uh, talk for writing, things like personal social emotional skills, how to actually play with your child, how to support them with their communication and language development, how to support them with their well-being. And so things like that, I think, really helped our parents to get an idea of the things that we do in school, but also how they might be able to support their child at home, maybe at the weekend, uh, maybe during the holidays, maybe after school. And they were sort of add-ons to our virtual school experience that went through the school day. So, yeah, just that that partnership, I think, is really key. Just that open, open dialogue between teachers and parents when things are a little bit tricky, reaching out and saying, I am finding this hard. And, and I think we did really well at responding to that, again, in a really personalised way to make sure that everybody felt supported um, and, and very happy in that virtual school experience. And I think one thing that I certainly had to do was, was try not to panic. I think as a parent, <laughs> it's quite scary when you're thrust back into a virtual school, but just try not to panic try to trust the teachers talk to the teachers be really open with the teachers and, and that partnership will allow your child to, to really really thrive that's one of the one of the things you said that i think is um re, a re, one of the real benefits out of this process actually was about how much parents knew know and knew and found out about what we we're actually doing in school and i think that's one of the, the the things that i think i've really reflected on is how can we keep that window open how can we keep that that level of knowledge um, that parents have about the the day to day, the week to week um, kind of um, view of their child's education, which ordinarily might have been kept to maybe a curriculum evening at the beginning of term, and then a parents evening, you know, once a term, and then a report. Actually, they were seeing the the com, you know, they were seeing the lessons that we were teaching, and for for early years, like all the amazing early years practice, like messy play, and and I think that really. Um, supported parents in, in uh, actually doing some of those activities at home. So we used tapestry in the early years to document the children's learning. And so it was really, really nice to see the parents posting on tapestry as well. So the teachers could get that lens in life at home with the children and the things that they achieve, the things that they do at home as well. And then we were also posting on Tapestry any progress or development that we had seen as well. So again, just that partnership, but through an online platform was really important for us to make sure that the children were progressing both at home and at school through the lens of the teacher and of the parent as well. That's a really, really good point. So I think that, that idea of partnership and also flexibility is, is really crucial. I think when, you, when you're a working parent or you're, you're home with your child, it, it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that you you just worry. Are they are they doing what they need to be doing? Where are they at? Does it does it match with where they should be for their age? And how do I know? So I think that that communication and that partnership aspect is crucial. When I was teaching those older children, I had one of our newer students who didn't know the school very well had to join virtually. And at one point, I had a, I had the mum on the phone, and the the son was there as well. And I was I was talking them through. I was like, get him to open his laptop, get him to show you this, then see the homework, and then she could see, oh, okay, this isn't working. Um, and I can support you as mum to support your child to access our virtual school because you've reached out to me, and I've reached out to you, and we've got this partnership now where we're working together. 
but your child's going to do the work. Your child's going to be the one who's succeeding and taking part in these virtual lessons at the age of, of 15. But I can keep checking that he's on track and let you know what you might need to do at home. And I think that's that's really important. I found that as a, as a mum as well, that if I needed to, I could be very flexible and look at my children's work maybe at six or seven in the evening or at the weekend. And we could still ping a message to the teachers, you know, that they would they would pick up when they were in school time and help support me or help support my child with wherever they were at in their learning. So there was there was just that that massive amount of flexibility needed, but that really huge amount of communication needed to make sure that we were all working together and that the, the children were able to, to be successful. So I think those are all really, really good points. All right, we're going to take a break for this episode, but the three of us will be back for round two of our discussion on EdTech and virtual school. So stay tuned for the next episode with us, Emma, Ed, and myself from North Anglo International School, Hong Kong. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.